if I show you these two types of presentative volume element for a unidirectional composite, one being a high fiber volume fraction unidirectional composite and the second being a low fiber volume fraction unidirectional composite. Do you think this can actually be created within ChatGPT? This is what I want to show you in this video, how you can quickly do this and get amazing results. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. So as we start this video, what we need to do is to develop some prompts that we're going to ask ChatGPT to help us in creating the problem that we are going to work with. So the first prompt that we have here is an instruction that I'm going to get charged with is saying write a MATLAB code for generating random circular fibers with uh, within a square RV that is 100 by 100 and I also wanted to make sure that the user has the option to specify your fiber radius and the volume fraction because these are usually the variables that you want uh, when you're creating a representative volume element of a UD composite and it's very important that the fibers do not intercept at all under any condition. And I add further information, say while creating the code, any circle fiber or circular fiber that appears on the edge of the RV domain has to be replicated on the directly opposite side so that what is called the periodicity of material is enforced. So these are some of the basic principles that you have when you are dealing with RV generation for a unidirectional composite. So now when we get into ChatG, to get it, all you need to do is to go to chat.openai.com and then there is this region where you need to specify the message. So I'm just going to paste that instruction that we've given, you know, which is a set of holistic instruction about what kind of RV we want to create. And then we'll run it and then I'll wait and see what kind of result that we generate for me. Because it's generative too, you know, it could give you different result for the same instruction. So if you give it another instruction for the same image, how did the pathway of generating that result? But let's see what we get from this. So if you look at right at the port, it says, okay, you, it's chosen a certain radius. I can go in here and change this radius within my code. Here, then it goes on to calculate the particle, a number of particles required, and then start generating the random positions of the particles um, initially, and then carries on to plotting the graph that we need and right at the end, we have some results. So it then gives us a comment at the end, you know, with about some instructions. Again, we're not going to be interested in that. So I'm just going to copy that and then I go to MATLAB. So within MATLAB, I need to create an, a new script. So I'll paste that instruction that is giving me and it makes sense to save it. So once we've done that, then we can run the code. Okay, so we see what it has plotted for us. So we may not like this because it's not creating actually the the circles as they're supposed to be. So we can always go back and make modification. So what do we do? Okay, so we go back here and so basically I'm telling you to write the code so that the fibers are plotted as circles with the face color of blue. So we basically send that information and then we'll see what it will do. So again, it goes through the same process of generating the data and creating with this modification that we're giving it. So at least it begins to look like what we we, we have in mind rather than the result that is generated here. So now what is saying that it's modified the way it was using, using a rectangular function now, which allows us to have a face color that is blue in this case. Okay, so we'll copy that. So if we go back to MATLAB, so I'm going to paste it as a second option and then I'll just save as number two. Okay, so we'll run that code. Now it's looking like what we would expect. So we've got the blue colors, we've got the fibers, we've got everything looking as we expect. So that's fine. So we can run again this code. So it's looking okay. It's looking okay, but in some cases, so if you see like around here, there's a bit of intersection there. So it's not replicating as we would want. So it's replicated properly here, but there's a bit of intersection, intersection as it tries to replicate. So we'll run another one. Okay, so there's a replication here in this way so this is fine so basically it, it's sort of doing that but not in a consistent manner so what we're going to ask it to do this consistently so and this is the instruction that i basically wanted to work on i said the replication is not working well to correct this i want to enforce an algorithm whereby a fiber that appears on the x edge with that in the left bottom right or must be replicated in a direct opposite edge. during this process if a fiber is being replicated and it intersects with an existing fiber already in the domain, then reject and remove it from the RV and, and basically doing that. So that we wouldn't have the problem of it intersecting with the other fibers. So now basically if we go back to our chat GPT 
I'm going to now give you this instruction. I said, okay, the replication is not working well. This is what I want you to do. And then now ChatGPT will implement this new information that is given me so that we can then have a better way to, 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 in, in, to capture this replication that we wanted. So it gets to a stage and it stops and it says, oh, because it's, it's kind of maxed out what is in its memory. So I just need to tell it to continue generating and then it continues with the, from where it stopped, creating more good lines to implement what we're talking about. Okay, so it's finished. And if you look inside the code, so what I'm going to do, let me just copy the code and then we can explore what the code is saying. So I'm going to make that as my number three. So I like to keep a history of how it is developing the code. So basically it's got a little function script that is generated here for checking intersection within the code and then replicating along the X and along the Y axis as required. And then this is the sort of way it checks that information. So let's just run that. Okay, so we can see there's a bit of consistency here. This is here, it's working, this is fine. We can keep going. So there is a problem that we're beginning to see when you have something on the corner like that, it's not doing a good job of replicating them. So we have to also then extend the way the code works by allowing it the option of dealing with things that are like in the corner like this, you know, the vertices. So that will be the next alteration that I'm going to give to this. So this is the next problem that we're going to work. Now I say now that the code is working, I just want another modification where you check for fibers that appear on the four vertices of this RV. Now use similar replication approach that as before, but this time replicate the fibers three times, one diagonally along as well as along the X and Y axis. So if you want some more information about this replication, then do look at this journal publication I published a while ago where I speak extensively around this. So I'm just going to copy that instruction. And then when we go to chat GPT, so I'm going to say, okay, I'll paste that command. Then I press down shift and enter. So this is another thing you can do. So I'm going to copy the code that I know that is working. I'm going to supply it with the instruction because I'm saying you have to work with this code below to adapt it with the suggested deformation, the suggested modification. And that's because this is a code that I like, it's working, it's doing one. So I don't want it to go off tangent and begin to write a different code for me. So I'm going to paste that there. So now once we've got that, so it will now force ChatGPT to use the code that I like, that looks like what I want, and now begin to make changes within that code. So again, it tries to replicate that same code and then get to the point where we need to provide that information. Now it stopped, I will just tell it to continue generating and then it keeps writing the code. Again, it stops, I tell it to keep generating because it's quite a long instruction that is going. This idea of, you know, replicating things three times, it's, it's, it's not easy, easy for it to do. So, and it has to do it for all the four vertices. And so it has a lot of lines in the code that I need to generate to make this possible. So it sort of finished it and you could see the code is much bigger than before. So we'll just copy the code. So again, we create a new entry for this. So I'll save that as number four here. And if you go back and look inside the code, you could see what we have here is that it's got this option where it say, okay, the current position of the fiber is somewhere in a region where it's in the right hand X, right hand X axis, as well as the right hand Y axis. So that's the top corner. And so using this and is a way to say, I want those two conditions to be obeyed. There are certain instructions for it to use. So we can now run that. Okay. So that looks okay. So we still have the correct application that we want. We just need to get one that is in the corner. There's none in the corner. We run. So we've got one that's in the corner. So if you look here, so we've got this particular appearing here. So some of the other half is going to be there and the other part that is cut out here will appear there. And the other part that is cut out here will appear there. So you can see that the implementation that we required where things are being replicated properly has been shown nicely in this example where there is a corner node here, a corner fiber. And so we have an enhancement to the code. So generally we're looking okay in what we want. So we're just going to improve on the outcome here to make sure that we have some things that are looking better. So I want it to identify for me those codes that are replicated and the edge node codes. So I'm going to basically work with that command. So I'll go back to the end of chat GPT. So I'm going to basically tell it, okay, use the code above to identify the replicated edge and fiber fibers by using a different color for, for them. Okay. Uh, this color should be red, for example. So let's say something like that. 
So now basically I wanted to work on that code and highlight clearly for me which nodes, which ones are the ones that are replicated properly. So again, it's trying to rewrite the whole code as required and then get to the point where it actually makes, identify those particles that are replicated. So, and it's finished. So we'll go back on the top and then we'll copy that code, go back to MATLAB and then we'll probably create a fifth version of this code. So save that as number seven. So I'm just going to go to the top and increase this to probably 50% and then we'll see what result we get. Okay, so that looks beautiful. So we've got all the fibers identified properly and the edge fibers are all there. Inside fibers are blue, the edge fibers are red and it's looking correct the way it should be. Now I want to do a little bit more. I want to have this information that is available from this. So the coordinates of the fibers so that we can then maybe use that to import into our backwards as, as part of our working. So, so basically this is what we want. I wanted to write a snippet of a code, just only a snippet, not the whole code. Now that I'm happy with the code, I can work only with tiny snippets of the code that will go with the above code that will allow for the fiber coordinates and the fiber numbers to be saved as CFZ file with fiber number on one column and the X and Y coordinates on another column. So we can run that. And then what it will do is it will just create a snippet that will do exactly what I've asked. It wouldn't create the whole code. It will do exactly what I've asked. And it's quite a simple code. So I'll just go ahead here and copy this code. Then we'll go back MATLAB. And then at the foot of the MATLAB, I will now add that snippet, which basically what it will do is that it would collect the values and then create also that and then we'll run that. So if we then run the code now, so it will create the result. And more importantly, you could see that it created a CSV file for me. So if I put this outside of MATLAB, then you could see clearly this is a fiber number and this is the X and Y coordinates. And we can then use this subsequently for our work. Another thing that may also be interesting for you to do is to tell you to write a snippet of a code where each fiber number is printed on the center of the fiber with text as white color. And then we'll ask just for that. The essence of all this extra information is just to create little snippets of code that can help and help embellish the result that you're getting so that at least you make sure that everything is looking correctly as it should be. So it's done this code and we can then copy it. So at the end of that, I'll just paste this extra snippet, plot the graph. Okay, you can see nicely it's done what we want. So we've got the particles. We've also got the number, so at least we know which one was first generated, the order in which they are. Okay, the last thing that I could do here is to tell you to write a code snippet that prints bold boundary lines for the RV and also an RV and the shapes of the whole RV background to become light gray. So we go and give that information and then see what it will do. So again, remember, we're only asking for a code snippet. So basically, it's making that information, asking for this information so that we, we are asking and then try and and make make the changes as desired okay so we've got that information and then we can go and paste it at the foot there and then run the code and see what result we get and instantly you can see we have a good result that's got both boundary lines we've got the fibers inside we've got the edge or boundary fibers and then we've got the fibers properly annotated internally we can also even ask it to include the fibers that are on the boundaries also annotated them with the numbers that you want and, and so on and so forth so that's really how you can use chat gpt to create this kind of information of course the challenge is how do you take this matlab output and bring it into abacus for example to run your your model and so i've made a video where i can show you how to use a code that i developed called monte carlo gen 2d to do exactly the same look at this video if you want to learn more about that thank you for interest in this video and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye